Most people think Mount Everest is a place, a big old mountain out there somewhere in the Bahamas or something. As car guys though, you and I know that Mount Everest is a thing, a quantity, or as your physics professor might have called it, a rate of change of position. Now you can't see it, you can't step on it with your climbing boot, but every car guy knows what Mount Everest is. That's right, the big two, 200 miles per hour. A lot of things can stand in your way when you're trying to reach the big two. Weather, wind, luck. Can our foursome of supercars climb Mount Everest and break the 200 mile per hour barrier? That's what we're gonna find out today. I'm here at California's high desert at Mojave Air and Spaceport. That's right, Spaceport. This is where, in 2004, Bert Rutan and his Spaceship One team completed the first successful privately funded space flight. Today, though, we're gonna be concerning ourselves with rockets of the ground-bound variety. Out there is a 15,000-foot runway, just under three miles. Now, trying to push a streetcar, even an exotic sports car, past 200 miles an hour and under three miles, well, it's a bit like trying to teach Lady Gaga to read Tolstoy in under three years. But we love a challenge, especially when it involves cars like these. First up, Lamborghini's $200,000 razor-edged fighter jet, the Gallardo LP560-4. Behind the driver's seat lies a 5.2 liter V10, making 552 horsepower at 8,000 RPM. It's mated to an E-Gear six-speed automatic. All that Olympian brawn feeds to the asphalt through all-wheel drive. This beauty can rocket to 60 miles per hour in just 3.4 seconds and, says Lamborghini, can reach a top speed of 202 miles per hour. Let's go. Sure looked like it hit 200 miles an hour, didn't it? In reality though, at speed, the average speedometer is about as reliable as a Russian nuke plant. We have to go to the computers for the true results. And they say the big Lambo hit a verified top speed of 191.3 miles per hour. Que bella. Feast your eyes on nearly $300,000 worth of red-blooded Ferrari, the magnificent 599 GTB Fiorano. Under that succulent hood lies a 612 horsepower 6.0 liter V12. Shifting transpires via lightning fast six-speed paddle shift auto clutch manual. Top speed, acclaimed 205 miles per hour. I've driven a 599 pretty close to the big two before. Let's see if today we can take this one over the top.
As you could hear from those warning bells, the Ferrari didn't like wearing all of our electronic gizmos. And it was almost running out of gas. Not that any of that mattered. This one was close. Real, real close. Computer verified top speed for the 599 GTB Fiorano, 196.3 miles per hour. Don't let those dignified, upright proportions fool you. You're looking at a screaming, hairy beast in a three-piece suit. Bentley's $275,000 Continental Supersports may weigh close to 5,000 pounds, but it shrugs off that mass with a twin-turbo 6-liter W12, making 621 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque. It's got all-wheel drive to put all that muscle down, too. Besides, while weight may have a dramatic effect on acceleration, it's all but meaningless to top speed. Bentley says the Super Sports is good for 204 miles per hour, if you've got enough room. Bentley's speedo actually proved pretty accurate. Computer verified top speed, 186.6 miles per hour. Just not enough room. So we haven't reached a true 200 miles an hour yet, but we've got one car left. This one just might be the most promising entry of them all. The $500,000 scissor door Mercedes-Benz SLR McLaren. Under that Cuisinart slicer bod, was a 5.4 liter V8 supercharged to 617 horses. Full carbon fiber skin keeps the weight down to just over 3,800 pounds. And I'm even taking off my balaclava to cut that even more. The hell with braking cones. On this run, I'm keeping my right foot planted until I'm staring at cactuses. any later than that. How was it, Art? I think you might have got there. Very close. 200, but we got to check the computer. The speedo was 200. So close. 199.1 miles per hour. And what have we proved? 
Well, unless you're talking to an IndyCar driver, anyone who tells you they've topped 200 miles an hour is likely selling you a big fat one. Truth is, if reaching a genuine big two is your goal, what you need is access to at least four or five miles of uninterrupted straightaway. Or maybe a Bugatti Veyron. been nice to see the SLR take one last win before blazing off into the sunset. But don't worry, Mercedes has another superstar waiting in the wings.